the uh, microphone. Go. Excellent. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, um, as Jim mentioned, I'm Colin Smith with the Environmental Data Initiative. And the Environmental Data Initiative is an NSF-funded project through the Division of Environmental Biology um, tasked with helping projects that don't have formal information management resources. Um, we're kind of tasked with help providing those resources to those groups. Um, so we provide services uh, such as a data archive. Um, we help with archival and data management best practices, as well as support de data archival directly. So um, oftentimes people will have a data set that they would like published and they communicate with me and my colleagues the data that they would like published they fill out a metadata template and um, i work with them uh, directly to make sure that all the relevant and pertinent information is there and it, and then i help create a data package and bring that into a repository so we're um, um, interested in sharing the expertise that we have which is really uh, been drawn out and, and evolved um, by the LTER community, the Long-Term Ecological Research Community, and that um, group of IMs and their expertise. So we are interested in, uh, or that's kind of our responsibility, is, is sharing that expertise with people outside of that community that may not have uh, formal information management training. So um, let me let me get this screen share going here. Um, and I will pause my webcam and oops, that's not what I wanted. Technical difficulties here. Present over on the upper right, I think. Oh, great. Thanks for the pointer. Yeah, I just got pointed. Somebody just did that to me yesterday because I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for sharing the knowledge there. So um, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, a blueprint for an information management software library for, informa uh, for the environmental sciences. Um, so again, our interest here in the software library is creating a resource that information managers have to use the tools that have been developed out there and improve upon them um, and so forth. Um, but but we, we also, coming from, from our perspective, have in, in mind uh, people with less information management training that may want to um, access these, these resources. Um, so today I'm going to be uh, presenting a few uh, blueprints that we drafted up that were um, based on discussions that we've had uh, across the IAM community and within, within ESIP. And, um, I'm going to share with you a couple of these blueprints and then really what I'd like today is for some comment and feedback from you all as to how these ideas, how these blueprints could be improved. Um, so our role, the Environmental Data Initiative, our role in this um, in this project is, is pretty much going to be just to help set this up. We really envision this to be a community driven effort because it's going to take um, expertise outside of our uh, core team that we have to really keep this thing running. And we also want this to be um, driven by the a, a broad spectrum of, of perspectives and uh, and and uh, knowledge that's out there. So we're going to help stand it up and then um, you know, get the, the ball rolling and then it, uh, envision it to be kind of a community run thing. Um, so what's the rationale for, for creating an information management, information management library in, in the environmental sciences? So 
we want to uh, minimize duplication of effort. We realize that, and, and this is kind of a problem with science software in, in general, is, is people write a lot in isolation for idiosyncratic tasks or for uh, you know a very particular narrow focus with maybe like a, a, a not a long-term perspective in, in mind when they're creating um, their, their software. So we think that a library would help with this. So it would expose these efforts. Um, it would help um, encourage development of high quality software tools, um, but basically give a, a place uh, <laughs> a place for others to use, which is kind of the second point here for our rationale is, is that we want to be providing quality software resources to the IAM community out there. Um, um, whether it's tools that are, are published ready that will go into a journal, a software journal, or whether it's um, something a little bit less formal, but is nonetheless helpful um, to, uh, Help uh, helping with uh, IAM related tasks. Um, we also envision that such a library would help inform development of new tools. So this would be kind of a central. This would be kind of a centralized hub uh, where resources are being shared, feedback is being given by the users, and also maybe some sort of a forum for. Um, users and or developers to meet and uh, create new tools to address uh, today's and future uh, information management needs. And as far as we can tell, um, this is an empty niche. This is something uh, the that really doesn't exist out there. So the closest analog that we found was was maybe Ontosoft, which is a software library focused on relatively high quality code um, or software, in a, particularly in the geosciences community, um, with, with more of a focus on models and analyses. Um, you know, there may be an opportunity here. Uh, I think we need to explore this a little bit more to set up a portal within Ontosoft that focuses particularly on information management. Um, so these portals are kind of either um, uh, organization specific, like USGS has one, or um, kind of by theme. So this might be a possibility that that we're going to explore a little bit more. But but nonetheless, currently, um, in contrast to what Ontosoft has to offer, and 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 across the rest of the landscape. Um, an IM library, information management library, would be unique. Um, this library would focus on tasks like quality assurance, quality control, data manipulation, formatting, metadata generation, etc. cetera. Um, but um, would differ also in that it would be, there would be like a dialogue space for, obviously, for these, these new tools to be developed. So, we we see from uh from our uh, what we've uh, looked at so far that this is a relatively empty niche. So back in July we we ran a session at ESIP uh, at the ESIP summer meeting and um, we presented kind of a, a, a pr something similar to this a proposed set of uh, parameters for an information management code uh, repository. Um, and we got some valuable feedback from from the those attendees. So the core characteristics that we kind of took away from those conversations is that we that it was important that the software in this library is quality, um, that it is generalized, uh, it's been tested, it's well documented. People can go and figure out how to use these resources with relatively little effort. Um, but in, in, uh, another uh, thing that was brought up that was kind of important and related to the quality of the software is that oftentimes people, you know, the the scale of the software, maybe the maturity of the software doesn't really need to be all that high. And we're looking for kind of 
maybe single scripts or uh, one-liners that help with a particular task. So if there was some way that we could incorporate this into the design, um, that would be beneficial. And so what we kind of, the discussion uh, kind of came up with is that there would be this tiered organization where maybe it'd be like a three level thing where at the base level you have these single scripts and one-liners um, that are maybe a bit more narrow focused and um, and then as you proceed up in levels that the top level you would arrive at yeah this these um, kind of publishable ready software entities um, it was it's important for this uh, these resources to be discoverable at multiple levels and what I mean by that is that oftentimes people just go open up Google and they punch in um, you know a, a pattern a search pattern in there um, so so we wanted to uh, it was important to make sure that the resources that the library itself and the resources within it are discoverable through just kind of normal searching techniques through Google um, discoverable also within github so optimizing um, repositories or, or sorry it's, uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead here but so whatever the the um, uh, is, uh, yeah, I'm jumping ahead here a little bit. So another level may be at the at the software entity. So like if there was a metadata um, for software, which uh, we actually propose here a little bit later, um, have a search engine that could that could query the specific fields of that metadata. Uh, so for detailed information on a um, a software entity. Um, Again, another important characteristic is being able to detect activity and discussions around current needs um, and uses which would fuel new tool development. So we see, again, this as being a, uh, an opportunity for development of new tools. And finally, uh, governance. Um, this is, uh, we need governance to kind of hold this community together and point to best practices and so forth. So uh, the discussion uh, suggested that governance is important, um, but that it's community driven and that it adapts to the needs of the community to kind of hold it all together um, in some persistent manner. So, there we go. So uh, we we took those uh, that uh, those comments to heart, and we came back and we kind of formulated two different blueprints um, that I'd like you to consider today. Uh, we're going to be thinking about these kind of at a relatively high level. So um, we can talk about details and get into the nitty gritty, but really just uh, want to give you kind of a high, a high level sense uh, and picture of how these things would be organized and, and, and meet the needs of um, uh, what we identified as being the core characteristics of such a library. So we have CLIMBS. These are kind of arbitrarily named right now. These are just working names. We have CLIMBS, which is the Code Library for Information Management and Environmental Sciences. It, this version is a bit more uh, complex and sophisticated. Well, not maybe not sophisticated, but a little bit more complex and heavy. Um, and then we have this IOS, which is Inventory of Environmental Software, and this is a pretty good descriptor of, of what it is. It's, it's kind of a catalog or an inventory of um, environmental software IM tools. So CLIMBS, here, here's a little sketch of, of uh, how things are organized here. So the idea here is that it would be implemented in GitHub. There would be a GitHub organization called CLIMBS. And within CLIMBS, uh, software entities or projects rather would be set up around a particular software. So say like an R tool or a Python tool or a Java tool. Um, and these would be administered by, um, you know, the people that set them up, the project. So we would in, we would uh, encourage people to set up a repository 
in climbs in which they would do their development, or maybe this could be a mirrored uh, version of their um, of their development space. Um, and what couldn't be imported in, into a repository here in GitHub would be a listed in a tool catalog. So that would be like in a wiki or something like that. We would point to external resources. Um, all these different software entities um, or projects would be required to fill out a standard set of forms that would you know, include like a README and contributing guidelines and so forth, but basically a standard set of forms with base level detail about the tool so that users could figure out how to um, use them effectively and then also contributors could uh, uh, help um, lend a hand with development of the tool. So one of these forms would include uh, this code meta uh, scientific software um, metadata standard. Um, and so each project or tool would fill this out and then deposit this in the organization level code meta um, repository, which would then be uh, tied to a search engine and then ultimately to the CLIMBS website. So there would be a search interface there and that would help with discovery. Um, we also have um, uh, a Google Groups here, which we would imagine as being a forum for dialogue about how to use the resources or maybe how, uh, what some of the future needs, uh, tool development needs are, but basically have a forum, a place for kind of informal discussion. Um, and then we would have governance over here, kind of maintaining things. So governance would, um, they would set up best, well, not set up best practices, but they would encourage best practices or at least post them. They would uh, help with maintenance of the overall system if any components or configurations needed to be changed and so forth. Um, and, but one important role that they serve governance in this model, in this CLIMBS configuration is a, um, is that they provide kind of a gatekeeper role to the quality of the software that's going in here. So there is some assessment made as to the quality and which tier. Remember, I talked about those three tiers that um, accommodate different levels of code, uh, software maturity, which uh, tier a particular tool would belong in um, and so forth. And governance would also play an important role here in, um, in um, kind of understanding where the community is and uh, what are its needs, what uh, what's hot right now, you know, what needs to uh, help identify um, which tools do need to be developed for the future. And governance would communicate this out to the community through some, you know, uh, listserv or whatever, uh, just to kind of keep everyone in sync and let everyone know um, what's going on in the community. So, um, then we have this 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 uh, IOS inventory of environmental software, which is a much more kind of uh, lightweight version. Essentially, it's it's more of just the the tool catalog that was presented in that previous slide. Um, so there would be an IOS GitHub organization, and there'd basically be a single repository in there uh, that contains these code meta JSON files from these different tools. So a tool or a project uh, submits that to uh, GitHub, or rather it would be kind of a pull request. And governance would just review uh, that the metadata is complete. There would be no judgment as to whether the, the, uh, the software is of a particular quality or anything like that. It would just basically just say, hey, is, is your uh, metadata complete? If so, yeah, come join us goes into the GitHub repo, and then this is a little bit more drawn out of a uh, schematic of kind of what maybe that um, that search engine would look like. But ultimately, there's a search portal on the IOS, uh, the Inv Inventory of Environmental Software website, um, which would be the primary means of discovering these different resources. Um, so, Sorry. Um, 
regarding the uh, the quality again of the software that would be kind of in this configuration um, governance doesn't really have to rule on quality um, we uh, the community would kind of vote on what is you know the best tool or or um, you know what is what is really useful um, by being able the governance may track maybe um, activity around a particular uh, software item or the uh, you know how well it's you know thumbs up thumbs down or whatever um, and discovery is 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 I think I think discovery we think the discovery in this uh, this uh, configuration would still be good we would have this um, this search interface here that uh, would query the metadata for the different entities, but we would also optimize this inventory of environmental software website for search and search engine discovery. Um, and um, in terms of being able to uh, detect activity or, or really, yeah, detect activity and, and help develop new tools, we were thinking maybe just having water coolers, you know, once a month and talk about uh, what do we want to see, what does the community want to see happen next, and and so forth. So kind of a you know a, a little informal gathering, talk about what um, what we'd like to see happen um, next. Um, so I think one of the one one of the big contrasts here with the first version is that the uh, governance is is a lot less here um it's still community driven and there's clear by laws and rules for for making any sort of judgments and so forth but it's uh, a much less complex um and uh, a heavy organization also another noteworthy feature here is that you know, uh, we don't require anybody to, we don't require uh, projects to set up a repository within the iOS GitHub organization. So people could be out developing in the world wherever they so choose to, and then just submit that metadata file and, and, and make that discoverable. Um, so real, real quick, uh, kind of the way that uh, we see these two, um, uh, uh, models comparing or these two blueprints comparing are that um, in terms of quality software for IMs we would th we think that um, climbs kind of wins here because they do have governance make passing judgment on you know whether it complies with community uh, best practices on software um, development formatting and so forth um, now, accommodating multiple levels of code, that tiered system, um, being able to uh, accommodate other things, other, other software than just publishable ready um, software. I, I have listed here as a tie, but actually I think this should be revised. I think that Climbs kind of wins here as well because there is uh, much less assessment in the iOS version. So maybe Climbs, um, would be better accommodating of multiple levels of code. However, in iOS, the second version that I talked about, there is no real requirement for quality. So in a sense, um, quality and or uh, development, in a sense, everything would kind of uh, go into that. And so, I don't know, maybe tie is a, the appropriate uh, term to be put there. Um, so discovery at multiple levels. So being able to discovery through Google, through uh, say GitHub search and through that custom code meta search engine, not really sure if climbs would be uh, come out on top there. Um, and detecting activity and fueling development of future tools. Again, I, you know, I, I think maybe it's a bit of a wash, uh, you know, whether, whether there is a governance committee that's kind of keeping its pulse on the the uh, the library the library users and developers, or whether these water cool coolers these informal water coolers proposed in the second model would kind of um, facilitate that uh, to the desirable degree. And in terms of governance and persistence, uh, 
kind of think climbs wins here because you do have a group that is actively um, uh, monitoring different aspects of the community and um, making adjustments accordingly um, and uh, also again uh, making assessment on the quality of the software so maybe it would turn less into uh, it would be a little bit less cluttered and more easy for people to use and um, would then um, kind of facilitate uh, or help help it keep, stay along around a bit longer kind of like an R open science community or something like that where there is review process and, and when you go to that community you have like a pretty good idea of what is uh, that the the contents are relatively uh, good quality. So um, yeah, I'd like to hear kind of open the floor for discussion. Any um, questions that I may be able to answer in what I just presented, um, but then also just generally, what are your thoughts about uh, about these two models? What do you think would you know uh, be uh, meet those core needs that we identified? Um, which would be the most persistent, you know, um, coming from maybe different perspectives. So maybe thinking about it from uh, a user perspective or a developer's perspective or someone sitting on the governance uh, committee. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to open it up for a discussion here. So thanks. All right, thanks, Colin. Um, anyone have a contribution? Well, I'll bite. Can you Excellent. hear me? I hear you. So, uh, first, one just little thing that just struck me is the word library is so overloaded from a software engineer's perspective that it's odd to hear it in this context. Okay. Though I know what, and so the word catalog or something else might be more appealing because a li software library actually means something in terms of software, right? It's, it's an, uh, it's code, it's a program or whatever it might be that can be accessed and incorporated into what you're doing. Okay, that makes sense. So, so when we actually say, what are your libraries, what are your dependencies, et cetera. But on a larger scale, I think I personally think that any attempt at quality, mon quality uh, constraints is a mistake. And, and we have this discussion in, about data too when we, uh, for these uh, repositories that we're working with for people to submit data to. People want to uh, be concerned with the quality of the data. It's sort of a user beware kind of world is more practical, right? Where you mentioned even in the IOS scenario that people could vote thumbs up or thumbs down, right? So if you, ex if you ask for a, a large, a good array of metadata and and then the proof is in the pudding, right? People are either going to use the software or they're not going to use it, and they can report on that. But uh, the reason is that quality is a moving target, mm. right? What are we going to do, you know, work for, and you didn't mention the first the proprietary versus open source. Right. And software as a service versus desktop and, and web services, et cetera, right? So uh, I just think that um, it's going to be a lot easier to maintain over time if, if people uh, are voting and with their feet and uh, those products that are are good are going to be used right uh, in addition to which the this I'm just throwing out ideas right so um, you talk about going for new worrying about new tools and specifying new tools well, one of the things that uh, we've discovered here in in developing science software is that the tools that we build are not static, right? They're always becoming new. They're always changing. Our tools advance science. Advanced science needs new changes in the tools, right? So it's an ongoing, never ending uh, process. And hence, you need to have uh, some uh, direct notion of the versioning process that's being used, right? GitHub is nice. Uh, it's a nice social coding uh, milieu, but the key part about it is is the versioning, right? And so if you publish a paper that is using a piece of software 
and you don't give the version, you're wasting my time, right? Because I can't reproduce or I can't even examine what you did if I don't have the version. And and so this versioning is just going to go, you know, as software is, is improved, it's going to stay as an active course of change and putting down your stake where the version that you use to publish is important because new things might be learned, new levels of um, precision might be developed and further uh, releases of the software that would not um, work well with your uh, initial conclusions, say. Um, and along with versioning are, is, is the now becoming more common use of DOIs for software. Right. Artifacts. So anyway, just throwing out some ideas. It's all, it sounds great. I mean, great idea. The, the EarthCube people have, as you discovered with OntoSoft, uh, got, you know, two or 300 pieces of software in there and all kinds of uh, fancy web interface, but I'm not exactly sure how much it's used. You want the, the whole point of doing this is to get it used, right? So you want to have low barriers to entry and low barriers to use. And and uh, and then in terms of having expense and sustainability, the less governance you have, the more likelihood you're going to survive low funding. Okay. Okay. Those Maybe are helpful. I got some right in that. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for those. Uh, thanks for those comments. That's uh, that's really helpful. Anyone else I could talk more about some of those those points that you had? But I'd like to. Yeah, if anybody else has a uh, some some uh, some points, I'd like to hear. I um, I put some points in the chat window. Um, I, unfortunately, okay. I have to run right now to catch some tra transport. But very briefly. Um, so in the ontology world, and ontologies can be seen as software to a degree, there have been some initiatives to coordinate the development of ontologies because they often become highly enmeshed with one another. Um, this would be a parallel to, say, software just borrowing parts of other software, etc. And so it might be worth looking at how the OBO Foundry has managed this over the years in the biomedical domain and increasingly the earth science domain. Um, it's just some core principles guide the whole the whole library of ontologies and those that stick to those really well get elevated up um, to a different kind of status and i think if you combine that with what has been suggested in terms of like stack overflow style voting up and down etc that would really um, create a good sort of marketplace and community um where people can actually you know market things out and i agree with you like people will vote with their p if the code is good it'll probably be forked or integrated into other streams it's just a question of trying to manage that so I think a lot of it, a lot of the task that you would be faced with is trying to well, index index these things and keep track of all of this. I think that would be the main thing. But overall, it sounds really great. It would be great to be able to go into such a marketplace. In the R um, environment for statistical computing, the R language, they have a small, they have a journal. Um, and they also have these task views, which are very um, useful. They're called CRAN task views, where you can go to, say, you know, um, econometrics or geospatial analysis. And you get an overview of that, something like that. Um, it's quite lightweight and, you know, you have an expert reviewing the code, they're very useful. So maybe some of those dimensions would be helpful. Okay, I'll take a look at those re uh, those resources. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing. I have a quick question, Bruce. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, do these chat, what happens to the contents of the chat? Uh, take a look at your notes. Oh, okay. I wasn't. So you're pasting them in. Thank you. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? Surely we yeah, we yeah, can't can't we get something going here argument wise? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Let's see if anybody else speaks up. Um. Do I have a question? Another question. Yeah. What is what is the funding mechanism here? Yeah. So this is, um, you know, we. I believe this falls under our the the scope of our funding, so we could help get this thing rolling and support it. Um, I think probably through. 
you know, the next couple of years anyway. But we were imagining that this would be kind of a um, just a volunteer based thing. I know that might be kind of hard to get people involved with, but if anybody has any extra time to lend us such an effort, you know, to keep this thing going into the future. But I don't know if once you kind of stand something up like this, maybe a basic uh, kind of IOS scenario um, where you just start with this, uh, this search engine um, and associated ontology and so, so forth, um, that it could be built upon or if it would be a foundation from which you could propose funding and, and maybe secure funding for future uh, persistence and, and development. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure how that might work. Does that answer your question, Jim? Yeah, I don't. I'm just kind of curious because these things are like, I mean, the uh, EarthCube uh, library uh, onto soft, I've talked to them and they're say when the funding runs out, that thing pretty well crashes too. Oh. So, I mean, it'll still be there, but they're not, you know, they're getting their, advancing their careers with funding and research and not keeping things alive after their funding runs out kind of thing. Right. So, I mean, it, this is a question of sustainability for all this, the software that you're talking about, plus these things that manage software access. And mm -hmm. finding an answer is really a big problem, but it would be great if we could come up with a solution or, you know, partially stage this as a, uh, you could possibly think of staging this as a, as a potential solution or, you know, examination of a solution to that problem. How do you make something so successful people want to volunteer to keep it going? Like, yeah, Wikipedia, right? Right. Right. Um, yeah, I don't really have uh, any experience or great insights with kind of end of life, you know, migrations and so forth. If yeah, I'd be, I'd like to hear more about that. I should definitely. If anybody else wants to talk about that or something, I need to look into myself. But yeah, it could be a good case study of sorts. So I have one. Um, do you think quality, like software quality and um, and, and, and governance, like in terms of regulating quality are, are kind of mutually exclusive? Um, do, d software quality will kind of develop on its own. It doesn't need somebody there saying, hey, this is the way you should do it. Um, well, so I, I mean, I teach software engineering, software architecture. I, you know, have a very strong opinion of what makes quality software, but I understand also that is the facts on the ground are going to change as new technologies come along. But the, I mean, you could say there's some basic things that have to do with documentation in particular, right? Documentation is just as important as the software tests, test cases, mm -hmm. uh, right. And, uh, these are two of the big parts that are often let go, right? We, my students are uh, asked to work with open source projects that they go out and find. And often more times than not, you'll, they find that the documentation is poor, the testing is poor, et cetera, right? Because these are things people don't want to do. They don't want to write software. So, but you can spend a lot of time saying that the software is of poor quality because it doesn't have good documentation or good, uh, testing, whereas the flip side of it is, if you put them in without worrying about the quality, but have a somehow an invite for people, if they use the software, to contribute to the documentation or contribute data sets for testing, then you can help solve the problem. Because even you know whether it's open source or commercially driven, people, the budgets, free time and paid time aren't there to produce quality code every time in terms of these measurements of having documentation and tests. So that might be another thing that, you know, this this uh, catalog could help contribute to the community a venue for people to advance the, the tools that they're using and like.
Sorry. Did yeah, that is okay. I, I caught you. Sorry, I had somebody talking in my ear over here. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. Any anybody else have any thoughts or, or general questions or you know comments that they'd like to add? All right, uh, Colin. Oh, wait, um, hold on. I have a couple more for you, sorry. Oh, good, okay. Sorry, I had a, I had a couple more questions that uh, I'd like to uh, ask of you all before before I let you go. Um, but are, are we, in, in terms of a user and, and discoverability, um, d does it seem like that we're approaching this correctly or thinking about this correctly, you know, optimizing, you know, say the, uh, the catalog homepage uh, for search engines and having that uh, metadata search engine in there that goes and references all these different software entities. Um, you know, I, I think this is probably going to be a, a little bit challenging and being able to, when somebody goes in to a search engine and says, hey, I'm looking for help with this, and it points to that, you know, it seems like it's going to be a big kind of community building exercise as well as you know, standing up those uh, the successful uh, search queries and, and so forth. So one possibility to think about is, you know, for web services, they have this thing called WSDL web, web services description language, little XML files or JSON files that are describe what the service is, and they're discoverable in Google. Huh. WSDL? Yeah. WSDL, web service okay. description. Okay, yeah. I've, yeah. So the point being that people can use Google. I use Google if I want looking for software, right? whatever and might as well make this stuff not have your own portal or a search engine just put out handles that people can find okay is a possible way to look at it we might be easier. Look. i'll take a look at that um okay i think that's kind of all I had. I, the, the only other question, I still need to, uh, you know, I'm new to the ESIP community and still kind of figuring out the landscape and all how, how all that works, but any um, opinions or suggestions as to how our effort could, you know, keep in touch with the, uh, or, or integrate um, with the ESIP uh, community or the software cluster if we kind of become something on the side that I don't know <laughs> I don't know how that works but it seems like the the ESIP community is would be a, a good uh, contributor to this and then help keep it rolling there's a lot of uh, expertise and knowledge in this community that I think kind of um, such a, a, a code catalog could benefit from Any recommendations as how to move forward with that? Yeah, I just want to bring, uh, this is Bruce, I just want to bring Ethan into this because I think uh, Unidata has been doing similar things with data. Um, and I wonder if there's an analogy between what they're doing with data and what could be done with with software. Um, you have any remarks on that, Ethan? Um. I guess we're not haven't really been doing a centralized cataloging and search capabilities around data, though those exist, and we try to build uh, support them. But uh, so I guess I'm not sure about the about uh, parallels with software and data. I mean, there are certainly parallels if you're trying to work on the cataloging of the either of these, but. Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I do wonder, um, I guess I, I'm, I'm unclear about the goal of, of this particular project in comparison to some others. I mean, like EarthCube is trying to catalog uh, resources, including software, and uh, 
I don't know who else is, but uh, is this different in some way than some of those other efforts or? Yeah, as far as we can tell a kind of centralized resource for information managers, um, you know, a, a tool catalog or whatever you'd like to call it, um, doesn't really exist out there. I, um, the Ontosoft uh, um, catalog or repository is something that I'm, I'm, I was just looking at that in a little bit more detail yesterday and thinking a little bit more outside the box. And there might be a possibility of setting up kind of a sub uh, sub uh, group or domain within that that would be focused more on uh, information management related software. So that's something I do plan on on, on looking into. But uh, surveys of the landscapes, you know, I, I haven't seen anything, any centralized um, resource like that. Right. I guess, I guess there's, uh, but there's a lot of efforts kind of trying to push in that direction, including not Ontosoft, but the core EarthCube uh, project is, you know, looking at that kind of uh, system registry of various tools. I guess I'm not sure exactly what you mean by information management. Do you mean data managers or, uh, yeah. and so I guess I'm not sure what tools one would be talking about. Yes, data managers. So um, maybe quality control uh, software, um, for various, you know, data types and uh, um, maybe meta uh, tools to help with metadata generation. Um, just kind of broadly, the tasks that maybe an information manager would would encounter, right, maybe right. database design and and so forth. Right. Yeah. Uh, are there other? Uh, now I'm asking Bruce or whoever. Uh, um, are there other efforts in ESIP that I, it seems like there have been other discussions around this, both in this in this group long ago and, uh, and a few others, and I'm not sure what else is out there, but it seems like there's a lot of different groups trying to do this. It might be good to, maybe that's what this call is, trying to pull people together, but I guess I don't know enough of the people working on that or don't remember enough details. So. Well, I think NASA has its own internal sort of software registry thing. Maybe Jessica knows more about that. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what, how that's, you know, what that catalog is based on. Right, right. And they have their standards. Uh, uh, system or, or recommendations for standards and stuff. So hmm. there's a lot of overlapping uh, pieces of this that right. I think are hard to keep or to separate out. One thing they're doing is uh, sort of a, a reuse index. How easy is this to reuse? Um, and uh, the reusability index, I, I think that came out of ESDSWG uh, with, with a bunch of ESIP help for software. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, I think we do need to think hard here about uh, any overlap that may exist and ensure that we're not stepping on anyone else's toes or that we are not, you know, duplicating effort and so forth. So it sounds like uh, there's a few, um, uh, a few groups here that I should uh, check into and, and see. I apologize for not looking deeper into the uh, the ESIP software cluster history. I'll go back and look at that and see if there's uh, any discussions on that. But Well, I would say there's no yeah, need to apologize. That's what these uh, calls are for, is to uh, for people to remember what had been has happened and bring people together. So. Okay. I, we know a number of people on the, uh, or I know a number of people on the Antusoft uh, investigator list. So, like Yolanda Gill, maybe we get her to come talk uh, one of these uh, 
Wednesdays. Um, yeah. Even, and even Aaron Robinson's on there, I see, <laughs> from EZIP. Yeah. So uh, I'll, send out an e I'll send out a request if I can get somebody for next time to uh, talk about Onsoft. Um, Colin, you, you mentioned that, you mentioned uh, governance and uh, quality of software, and I know there was a little discussion about that. What what uh, it sounded like you had some guidelines that you were or this you were visualizing this as having some guidance for tool developers. Is that right or? Yeah. So that was one of the versions would be uh, um, making a. a quality assessment and um, I think it is I think there's a, a set of guidelines actually uh, formulated from within yeah the ESIP community that we were looking at and it looked like a great place to uh, you know a, a great resource for people developing you know people that that maybe don't have the the formal training in it but could uh, learn from some of these best practices I didn't have anything specific other than that in mind um, and I don't know if you caught during the conversation or what your opinion is about that uh, you know trying to assess quality versus kind of let lowering the barrier and and letting more people lowering that threshold for participation and getting more people involved and so forth and how that plays into the longevity of the uh, the resource the uh, the catalog the IM uh, software catalog um, but yeah, I, I, I didn't have a particular uh, guiding document in mind. Okay, well, that was kind of the ESIP uh, software guidelines or whatever they're called is kind of what I was uh, going to mention. If uh, but you already mentioned it, so I yeah, I have seen that and it yeah. was great. But well. Thanks a lot for uh, for everybody for um, being here today and providing this valuable feedback. And uh, I think our next steps with this are going to be, you know, dig into the uh, landscape a little bit more. Ensure we're not we're overlapping that we're not overlapping with anybody. And then we're going to draft up a document, a short document describing um, what we envision for this uh, for this um, code catalog or. Um, not library, but uh, code catalog, and then we'll send that out, uh, you know, to the community, to ESIP, to the other people that um, are kind of uh, that we're working with at the Environmental Data Initiative, and then get another round of feedback before, you know, beginning to implement this. So, thanks a lot and appreciate it. And uh, is it next month? We're meeting next month. <laughs>